This is Ronan Pessar with Silo. You're actually not expecting this call. It's the first time I've tried to reach you. Mind it if I share why I'm calling? You can let me know if it's relevant or not. Sure. I appreciate that. Out of curiosity, are you using a tool like Zendesk or Salesforce for your ticketing today? Salesforce. Okay, great. This next question isn't a gotcha or anything, but do you have a way of knowing of all the tickets and cases, which one was the most urgent to get to this week? Yes, I do. Very cool. A lot of people actually but don't, which is why I'm calling. How are you guys doing that? We've got our own in-house customer health score and triaging mechanism. Beautiful. That's kind of what Silo does. I don't know if this would be of interest to you, but essentially we're using NLP to auto tag all your cases for you with relevant terms that represent back to And then we also yep. assign sentiment like frustration and urgency, kind of all done for you in real time. Any interest in taking a look sometime? Possibly in the future. Right now, we're pretty happy with what we got, and I don't have a lot of budget for any extra software at the moment. Yeah, totally understand that. One last question for you. When it comes to relaying what you're learning and support back to product, is that part of what you're able to do today with your current setup? We do some of that with the data that we collect from the support cases and then collaborative workshops with the product team. Okay, cool. The reason I ask is that's also part of the value. Silo uh, is able to plug in and then also give you that reporting on the back end so that you can see those trends in real time as they unfold and communicate the more urgent stuff to work on for product and engineering. Yeah, that's interesting. Do you want to send me some more information? Yeah, I'm happy to do that. To be totally honest with you, I do this a lot, and usually I send something and, and that's kind of it. I never heard back from someone. Would it be totally crazy to put 20 or 30 minutes on the calendar at some point when you have a few minutes to take a look? Usually uh, this time in the afternoon, uh, Thursday or Friday next week. Ronan, my man, you're back for another cold call video. Ronan, so the first cold call video that we did a few weeks back, that video, we have a couple videos on the YouTube channel that are all cold call related that have done really well. I think our best video was like around 80,000 views. I think that video that we did, the first video we did together, I think that one is going to top, but it's just going to take some time to get there. But this one, this cold call recording, and correct me if I'm wrong, the first cold call recording that you, we did, that one went viral on LinkedIn, right? Oh, yeah. On LinkedIn alone, it got uh, about 100,000 100, uh, impressions with huge amount of engagement. Yeah, it was a killer video. Now, this recording, I actually like this recording better for a number me of reasons. Me too, actually. I'll, me too. And I think you're going to have the same reasons why. <laughs> oh, I, I think this is, this is the best cold call recording I've ever heard. And I know I said that in the previous video, but I think this one from start to finish, the amount of objections you handled in this was killer. So let me yeah. share out my screen here, guys. And what we're going to do is we're just going to go through the video that Ronan posted on LinkedIn, and we're going to break it down here from start to finish. So let me share out my screen. And I've said this, Ronan, about eight times today. Can you see my screen? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. It's like yeah. that, and you're on mute. Are the two phrases said like on nauseam during <laughs> the post-pandemic exactly. world? <laughs> exactly. Let me move my face out of the way here, too. All right. Let's get into this recording. Let me hit play here. This is Ronan Pessar with Silo. You're actually not expecting this call. It's the first time I've tried to reach you. Mind it if I share why I'm calling? You can let me know if it's relevant or not. Sure. All right. I want to quickly stop it there. I know we talked about this at length on the first video, so we don't have to talk about it too deep here. But permission-based opener, and I did notice this is a different permission-based opener that you used on the first call. How often are you changing up your cold call openers? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm i a strange creature in the fact that, like, I just get bored with what I'm doing at a certain point. Um, and I wouldn't have done this if I were earlier in my career and, you know, I just started making cold calls. But now that I've been doing it for almost a decade and I've gotten very comfortable with it, I actually like to test out different openers all the time. I said this uh, previously, and I'll say it, you know, until I'm blue in the face. Your opener doesn't really matter a whole lot. Like, you can you can mess up an opener, and that matters. But people put too much emphasis on what you say in those first few seconds it's more about the delivery and the confidence what i like about this one so i got this from uh a near and dear friend ryan reiser um oh yeah and so he him and the some of the other folks that he's worked with in the past um they go with this one because it's direct 
it is permission based, which I know there's um there's a new theory out there that's like skip the permission base and just cut straight to the chase. Uh, uh -huh. But what I like about it the most is you kind of frame it up for the person by saying, "Mind if I take half a minute to share why I'm calling you? It's not random, you know. I, I have a reason for this call. Aren't you curious to figure out why?" And the best part about it is you can handle it already. No matter what the prospect says, you can handle what they say, knowing exactly what the options are, yes or no, um, you, you know how to handle it from there. So if they say like, yeah, sure, go ahead, then you go into your you know, next few steps. But if they say no, that's where I'm always ready to say something like, hey, no worries. Um, sounds like I might have got you at a bad time. Is it worth me sharing why I was calling to figure out if I should even call you back at another time? Perfect. Perfect, perfect way to handle that objection. And usually to that they say, yeah, go ahead. So you're labeling the situation by saying it sounds like I might have caught you at a bad time. Chris Voss stuff right there. Awesome. That's right. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right. So, guys, again, it can be monotonous when you're picking up the phone 50 to 100 times a day. Change it up. You're going to get bored with the cold call opener. And it's more about how you deliver it with your tonality and pacing than it is the actual words that you're using. I appreciate that. Out of curiosity, are you using a tool like Zendesk or Salesforce for your ticketing today? Salesforce. Okay, great. This next question isn't a gotcha or anything, but do you have a way of knowing of all the tickets and cases, which one was the most urgent to get to this week? Yes, I do. So I feel like here is where a lot of cold callers would get tripped up when the prospect comes back and says, yes, I do. I feel like a lot of salespeople, if they're just starting out in this game, would invite themselves out of the call. This would fluster them. So mm -hmm. This is one of my favorite parts of the cold call here. Yeah, totally. It's easy to, in my younger years, I might have said something like, okay, great, have a, have a nice day, hang up. Exactly. You know? yeah. uh, but I find like if you're prepared, most people's products have like more than one value that they add to their prospects world if you're prepared on a cold call to talk about and ask questions around more than one at least have one backup as you'll see later in this call that actually helps you to continue to probe for is there any interest or curiosity around this product around this thing that we do um, so in this case he says yes we do and you'll see here in a moment um, that that actually becomes part of the conversation opener because until this moment he's given me one to three word answers He's being polite, but wants me off the phone. That's the vibe I'm picking up from his tone, right? But at this next part, we kind of open up the conversation a bit as a result of him saying, I do actually have something. Awesome. Very cool. A lot of people actually with don't, what, which is why I'm calling. How are you guys doing that? We've... One really quick thing here. I really like how you said that with a little bit of an uptone, a little bit of a laugh. Really good delivery with how you, you went with that question there. We've done our own in-house customer health score and triaging mechanism. Beautiful. That's kind of what Stylo does. I don't know if this would be of interest to you, but essentially... Now that phrase, I think... Did we talk about that, Ronan? Did you use that kind of same phrase on the last recording? I don't know if that'll be of interest to you. You said something similar to that. It might not have been that exact word track. But again, that's just killer, killer, a killer phrase there. I mean, I say that all the time. I use that in emails as well. It always works well. So why do you say a statement like that before you get into this NLP auto tagging with what your product does? It's a great question. I've really learned that uh, over time, prospects will respond better when you're not sure, when you're unsure with your tone. So whether it's email or cold calling, uh, to be a little bit unsure instead of saying something direct, will invite them to open up a little bit more, right? Mm -hmm. So if I say something like, uh, at the end of, let's uh, just go with a cold email even, um, you know, do you want to take a 30 minute demo versus, um, you know, I'm not sure if this is of interest to you. Do you want to learn more? It's the same ask, but the second one is unsure. And that opens the prospect up and in cold calls, it works the same way, right? Like if you say something where I'm not really sure if this is of interest to you, um, you're giving yourself almost like plausible deniability that like, hey, I, I have something here. Maybe it's not a fit. You're kind of in your own words and with that phrase, you're giving the prospect the understanding that like, I know my product doesn't solve everyone's problems and that you even have this problem. But hey, here's the thing that I do. Is this interesting to you? Gain interest first. Interest base versus specific. Totally. Yeah. Awesome.
We're using NLP to auto tag all your cases for you with relevant terms that reference back to. And then we also yep. find sentiment like frustration and urgency, kind of all done for you in real time. Any interest in taking a look sometime? Again, interest. Possibly in the future. Right now, we're pretty happy with what we got, and I don't have a lot of budget for any extra software at the moment. So he threw two objections two. out here. Two, not two. one, two. <laughs> we're happy with who we're using. We have a vendor, and we don't have budget for extra software. So two objections at, at once here coming yeah. out. Yeah, you, you know, hey, we're, we're happy with our, I think he said it was an in-house solution. Oh, and no budget, by the way. It's like, okay, whoa. So I've gotten hit with like, we're set, we're good. Already have something, like we don't have budget. At this point, most people are gonna hit the eject button and bail. Oh, oh, 100%, 100%. I think 99 out of 100 people making cold calls would have hit the eject button at the first objection, but this time, so you've gotten three already. <laughs> yeah. This is awesome. Yeah, totally understand that. Just one last question for you. When it comes to relaying what you're learning and support back to products, is that part of what you're able to do today with your current setup? We do some of that with the data that we collect from the support cases and then collaborative workshops with the product team. Okay, cool. The reason I ask is that's also part of the value. Silo. Uh, I was able to plug in and then also give you that reporting on the back end so that you can see those trends in real time as they unfold and communicate the more urgent stuff to work on for product and engineering. So how many value props did you share on this call? Like how many different problems did you convey that Stylo could fix on this call? Are we at three at this point? So it's really just two, um, okay. but the first one was kind of focused around sentiment analysis and the second one is around like reporting and feedback. Um, and that first one, he's like, yeah, we're all good. We've got this thing. I just kind of broke it down into different areas in that first one. Um, but what was, this is what I'm talking about by have that second thing ready to go. And I think one of the, the lead up questions here was, you know, one last question for you. Yeah, that yep. kind of tells them, hey, I'm about to let you off the phone. Exactly. But I'm going to ask you one more thing. And then I went with another question that uh, one of my favorite all time guys on LinkedIn, Bilal, calls a mic drop moment where you just ask a question that, that kind of pokes at them. It kind of, it's like the scene in Eight Mile when Eminem gets up there, says all the stuff about himself, and then the other rapper chokes yeah. and he wins the battle. I, sorry if I ruined that movie for anyone, but. Oh, you're good. <laughs> if you haven't seen Eight Mile at this point, guys, come on. <laughs> yeah, come but on. like, that's it. That's exactly it. Like, you see the thing that kind of gets them to just be like, uh, I don't know, it stops them in their tracks. And so yep. what better way to stop them in their tracks by asking a question that relates to a common challenge that you know your prospects deal with. So have at least two of those ready to go. So if the first one is responded to with, nah, we're all good with that, you have that second one in your back pocket on the off chance that you can keep going and get to that second question as well. And you got his interest here with this second one. Exactly. Yep. Uh-oh. You want to send me some more information? Here's another objection. <laughs> Do you want to send me some more information? Yeah, I'm happy to do that. To be totally honest with you, I do this a lot, and usually I send something and, and that's kind of it. I never heard back from someone. Would it be totally crazy to put 20 or 30 minutes on the calendar at some point when you have a few minutes to take a look? Usually uh, this time in the afternoon, uh, Thursday or Friday next week. All right, so that was awesome. Most salespeople <laughs> would be happy that the prospect came back and said, send me some information. They're going to send over an email that is not going to get read. It's going to set, get sent right into the junk drawer. You came back, handled the objection perfectly, and went with a no-oriented question to invite yourself out of the call and get a demo book. So, I mean, if you want to just walk us through what your thought process is first, how to handle that objection, then second, Ronan, if you could just walk through how you ask for a meeting. Totally. Um, that objection is one that you will get no matter what you're selling as an SDR, um, possibly in the top three, maybe one or two in terms of its frequency of objections that you get. You know what? Interesting. Send me an email. You've got to understand when it's a pure brush off versus a legitimate ask. Uh, when it's a pure brush off, it's usually early in the call when you haven't talked about anything. Um, and the person just says, yeah, go ahead and send me an email. I'll get back to you if I'm interested. If that's the case, address it as a brush off by saying something like, uh, I'm totally happy to send you the email. You know, we haven't really talked about much today. I haven't been able to tell you much about what our product does and how it helps. And then you insert the challenge that you solve and say something like, do you, do you have something in mind that you want me to send or no harm, no foul here, but do you just want to get me off the phone? 
And yeah. usually that breaks people's defenses down where they'll either go like, yeah, like, all right, tell me what you do. And then you've just opened up the potential for conversation. If it's real, in this case, I actually suspected it was real, that he was kind of interested. And he's like, you know, actually send me that email. That's where you go for the kill. And what I mean by that is the meeting. Yeah. So with that one, I always hit him with this. And this is like one of my favorite objection handles of all time. Hey, no worries. Uh, I've been doing this for a long time. And I've sent a lot of these emails after people have asked. And after all these years, I've never yet had someone reply to one of those emails. Would it be totally crazy if we just set 20 or 30 minutes on the calendar at some point when you had a few minutes to take a look? And so, like you said, Matt, it's a no-oriented question. Would it be totally crazy? Mm -hmm. uh, a little bit of Chris Voss in there, right? Yep. So saying something in the extreme to get them to say, no, it wouldn't be totally crazy, right? So you actually want them to say, no, that's not crazy. Sure, let's take a few minutes to take a look. In this case, he happened to say, yeah, Thursday or Friday, and then you know, the demo ensued, it turned into a good opportunity and so on and so forth. Four or five objections. I lost count. <laughs> I think there's five total in there somewhere. See, the thing with, with, the, with this call is you got all the meat off the bone. There was nothing, when you left that call, there was nothing else you could have done on that call. This call is, in my opinion, 10 times better than that other call. Because I don't, on the other call, I think you got maybe one objection five objections on a cold call and you yeah. got a meeting book, you got interest. I mean, come on, this is probably the best cold call recording that's going to be up on YouTube. Hands down. <laughs> very confident. Right? It, I'm very confident. Matt. I mean, that's exactly why I love this one because listen, this stuff doesn't usually pan out so smooth. I do a lot of these, but when they do work out like this and you find those calls and you, you hold on to those recordings because that's gold when you can actually see it pulling, pulling back all those layers and you, you uh, really unpack what's happening there. Five objections is not actually so uncommon. The question is, how how badly do you want to get that meeting? How willing are you to continue to stand up in front of the objection, acknowledge it, handle it, and then ask for what you want to ask for, which is the three-step framework I use to handle every objection. Acknowledge what they say, respond to the objection, and then ask for what you want to ask for. Mm -hmm. If you can do that every time, you might actually get more meetings but have to handle four or five objections on a cold call. And you're able to do that because you practice every day. You do those rapid fire objections to start your day before you're picking up the phone. You're not practicing on the prospect. You're practicing before you pick the phone up. That's exactly That's how, right. why you're able to do it. Oh my God. It's funny you talk about practice and uh, I didn't even intend to bring this up, but <laughs> we're, I'm about to release a uh, live coaching practice on a company called Second Body. It's the coolest okay. thing ever. It's this technology. A friend of mine, Arlo, is the CEO there. He built it for actors to practice initially. Their yeah. Lines. Uh, but the way it works is you hear me in your ear, and you practice the tone and the handle to the objection. And then you have someone re like say the objection to oh, you. Way. So it's, it's role-playing with a robot, but with Ronan, your coach, in your ear, helping you through those uh, objections so you can get the tone, the cadence, and the pace down perfectly the way I would. Um, so it's a really cool Dude, thing. That's awesome. Yeah, it's it's a really cool company. Second body, check it out. Um, I'm gonna have a few courses up there as well where you can. Um, I, th I think it's pretty cheap. It's like uh, one of those monthly things or, or annual subscriptions, and you get access to all these coaches, cool people like Kevin Dorsey, Sarah Brazier, Bilal will all be on there as well with their content. Um, but it's cool because you actually get to practice the way they do it, the way you watched on this call. So this is probably something I can link in the description, probably. Absolutely. Yeah. I'll make sure to get right you a there. link. Perfect. I will link guys. I'm going to link it in the description. Definitely check it out. Got to practice every day. Ronan, thank you so much for this. Is there anything you want to leave everybody with before we wrap up here? Last thing I'll say is if you're not already active on LinkedIn, um, certainly give myself and Matt a follow. I mean, LinkedIn is a hotbed of tips and advice, all the stuff you want to be reading. If you're looking for some quick actionable tips of like how to do stuff to better uh, yourself, improve your skills and get better results. If you're an SDR or an AE who makes cold calls, um, check it out. I'm very active on there. I post daily. Matt, I see you're on there almost every day. Um, yep. Put some good stuff out there too. Um, so yeah, if you're not already, Ronan's, give us a follow. Yeah. Ronan's LinkedIn will be in the description. So click the link, follow and send him a connect request and make sure you put in the connect request that you found him on this video. And one more thing. I noticed earlier today, your headline on LinkedIn changed. 
I have never seen a headline on LinkedIn like yours. So maybe in a future video, <laughs> we can break down the headline because I made videos on like LinkedIn headlines, but it's really, really cool. And this would get me to want to click on your, your profile. That's it. So that's a future video. <laughs> yeah. That's what you're going for. Exactly what you're going for. And guys, let us know in the comment section below what you liked about this video. Please like the video, subscribe, hit the bell to be notified every Tuesday and Thursday. And if you want to keep seeing Ronin on these cold call videos, let us know in the comment section below. Ronin, what's your favorite emoji? Ooh, favorite emoji is smirk face. Smirk face. If you want to keep seeing him, put a smirk face in the comment section. I love it. Awesome. Ronan, thank you so much, man. Thank Appreciate you, Matt. It. You bet. All right, guys. Have a good one.